Hello everybody, this is episode 16 of Shoot the Breeze, a chill interview and chill time all around for you and me. I am your host, Debbie Divider, and with me right now is, is a very blunt but honest individual. As a matter of fact, he is somebody who basically will tell you how it is, as well as basically, if there's something wrong, he'll say it out loud. Oh god, I just felt I'm going all over the place. But ba but yeah. But yeah, my guest for tonight here is is pretty is pretty much Lockscar here. So welcome, Lockscar. I'm glad you can have me, man. Yeah, hey, no problem, dude. It's it's all good. And plus it's one it's plus it's one of those things where basically I just want to get a chance to get to know get to know you as well as everybody else in the world get to know you as a as a human being. But bef so the first question I would like to ask on hand is, how the hell did we meet? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I have I have a hunch. I have a hunch on how we met. I believe. All right, go for it. I believe we met through Arnie, who was da okay. Here's a here's the scene I'm setting up. Basically, we met through Arnie at a Mike Knight world, and I remember seeing your old avatar, which is like this giant Yeti or something. Where basically it was like Slender Man, but had like a <laughs> had like the uh, had like some sort of okay, like yeah, had, had some like sort of Aqua Aqua mask or something on it. I don't know what it, I don't know what it's from. It was just a something I made. It was my second ever finished model. So yeah, that was a while ago. The other like hunch over two years. <laughs> over two years, yeah, because that's how I met you before you before you went full gimp suit, like. And yeah. I, I honestly believe that it was either through Arnie or maybe Brew Manchu. I'm not sure. It, it's one it's one of the mysteries right there. I'm I've been trying to figure out. I've been trying to figure out on the side. But past that, or so I met you, and you also had like that invisible ab invisible shader to where basically at one point or another you did scare me, because you did scare me at one point. Like literally, like literally, with how tall you were, you basically just bend down, just kind of like did that while looking at me at one point. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, my Wendigo model is that, what you're talking about. Yeah, Wendigo model. That's what it was. Yeah, the Wendigo model on hand, and. But yeah, that was a hell of a time on it. And it was like ever since then or so. I didn't. Be I, that was actually my first encounter with you. I didn't become friends with you till maybe later on after a few more encounters, after I got a chance to know you yeah. more. But uh, next past that or so, I would like to know your VR chat origins. Like, what got you into playing this game, or what draw you to it? I mean, I've always liked social games, but after getting VR. The first VR headset I got was the Oculus Dev Kit 1, which is like the very, very first one, which had no like tracking or anything. You could just look around like mm -hmm. how you would do with a phone camera. So the first VR like social game I played was Alt Space. And then I went to <laughs> Rec Room and then I ended up in VR Chat. I think I picked VR Chat just because of random YouTube videos that had clips and stuff in it for it that, yeah that's how i found vr chat too i just found like random like compilations and everything i was like Ooh, what's this and then i just got on desktop and it was like that's that's history right there so true story, story history right there for the most part um question i would like to ask to on hand is basically like besides this game entirely what are your hobbies outside of this like any any other multiplayer? Because I mentioned, because I know you play Apex and everything. A lot, yeah. A, a, you play a lot of Apex. That game has taken a lot of my money, <laughs> and I'm okay with it. Having a the good time. But it's a free-to-play game. It's like people can fund the developers. That's fine. Go for it. Fun time all uh, around for it. Any other games? Like I used to play Overwatch before coming to Apex. Like, I was still in the Overwatch phase when I started playing VR chat. So, mm. like, I just play random games that I come across that I find interesting. That's mm. it. But hobbies... Uh... I don't know if drinking's a hobby since I don't do it much anymore. So I guess that doesn't count. I mean, depends on if you're the kind of connoisseur with, like, what kind of drink you're trying out or so. Oh yes, I'm I'm a wine taster, you know. I just, mm, yes, exquisite. No, <laughs> that's not, that would that's not a hobby I have. No, I think just playing games is it. Mm. I mean, I used to do a lot of fishing, but that stopped. So I got you. I used to yep. fish. I used to fish too. Like I I remember. What's your high score? 
high score of, believe it or not, the highest score. How many fish in one day? How many fish in one day? I'm going to say five, five or six. That's about as close as I got. Ooh, <laughs> I'm at 46. <laughs> 46 in one day? In 46 in, I think, six hours. We're Off the shore, not even on a boat. <laughs> That, it must have been it must have been like a migration or something just to be able to get that many fish just to like to be able to well, pull I mean, in when the i think it's I, I can't remember if it's the mississippi river or the tennessee river that's right above or going through alabama but during the winter they like lower the water so it makes all the fish converge into like a smaller spot so they all I'll have to go past the lure. Easy. <laughs> e easy. What I cheat the system. <laughs> you you probably you cheat the system if further you had like a giant fish net just be able to catch as many as you can, but it'd be a matter of moving all that along the way from where you ever gotta take that. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I had like a where I used to fish or so, I uh, my family used to own like a giant like they owned like a piece of land on hand where where we used to go camping and in that was like a pond. I think it was like 21, I think it might have been like 21 acres, I'm not sure. But basically in that there was a giant pond and basically it was filled with catfish. And I remember my bro I remember my brother-in-law basically stopping by and saying, you know, I feel like fishing or so. I was like, okay, well, I'll join you. I caught six fish out of that pond and on his side or so, we had like a trailer near us to throw where the fish is. He caught 11 of them. So we had like a bunch of, ki about 17 catfish stacked up on a trailer just to be able to take a picture nice. and look at. Yeah. I mean, me, I don't eat fish, <laughs> so, I, besides, there's like a limit for how many fish you can catch, and it's like, I think 12, so. <laughs> well, since it was like eight, since it fun was like. Fun fact about that fishing spot, mm -hmm. fun fact about that fishing spot, I have, I think, yeah, I witnessed a crime there once. <laughs> oh, well. What is, no, it's fine. No. I had. Me and this one, like, I went fishing at, like, say, four in the morning, like, super early, and me and this one guy, like, I met up with him, random guy, we just started talking, whatever, out of nowhere, like, this white pickup truck comes, like, down the road and goes behind, like, a tree line, and I know that behind that tree line, there's, like, a cliff, like, where the lake is, and I hear, like, this huge splash, so I thought maybe the truck had fallen in and they didn't know that there was the cliff there so i started walking over here or over there and they fucking zoom off so when i get over there there's like and look down there's an entire atm in the water and it's only like this far in the water they must have thought it was deeper because that's as far as it went and then like two months later while i was fishing when the water was down I found a Colt 1911 gun <laughs> just in the sand. I live in a great city. <laughs> you, you, you're finding like different kinds of treasures on the river, even if you're not looking for them. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. how, how would you feel if you just basically be fishing and then out of nowhere you just see like an empty ATM just basically floating down the river while you're just kind of like trying to catch some fish? Well, I don't think it would float and be full of metal. But... Be full, full, full of metal, but in, you never know. Just something weird that would catch your eye on that morning. Jesus. Yeah. Oh boy, but uh. But yeah, I contacted the cops, reported yada yada yada, and they, yeah. No, I got you. I Easy. mean, it, it'd be an interesting moment in your life to be able to see that, just for the most part. But uh. Yeah. Past that, I was gonna ask you about communities on hand, cause, and the thing about it is, like, everybody's been part of like some interesting communities on hand, or have seen some interesting things that have happened here and there. And I was gonna ask from your uh, point of view, what is some of the most interesting things you've seen happen in like certain communities you've ever been part of? Or just kinda like some interesting moments you would you would share? I mean, the communities I mostly hang out with are mostly drinking groups now. Because I mean, those are the only type of communities I really see on this game <laughs> anymore. So I mean one of the funniest like the reason i like drinking groups is because a lot of people who drink in this game have full body mm -hmm. so you can visibly tell when they're plastered off their ass and when they stumble and fall over <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> I get you. Uh, this is one time like way long ago my friend was telling me no nah, he's sober he's sober <laughs> he falls backwards <laughs> 
yeah, you can just see times. you can just see the visible tracking on hand for like especially with how big their room their room space is for all that entirely, and yeah, I if I want to add something into it, I think it's also the fact that basically with that kind with whatever kind of drink group it is or so, you can at least have a good time to be able to talk about anything while basically just chilling mm -hmm. for the most part, because I feel like that's the entirety yeah, because... of those drink groups entirely just chill, at its finest. Yeah, no one gives a shit about what you talk about everyone's fine mm -hmm. with whatever you say and that's why i like those groups the most because i can truly be myself talk shit be f everyone's fine with it mm -hmm. so yeah and just be, and nice. just and just be and just be able to like have like a good time overall just especially with whatever you want to share and everything especially if it's on your mind yeah. or something you have stored up so no, i got you got you on hand um I will ask about the party scene on hand because I've I've heard some interesting things from different people from Hara to like from Darth to basically on certain party scenes that have been happening on hand within VR chat. So have you seen some have you seen some interesting ones or seen like some ways they kind of have it on hand or so, especially in the sense of like um, not just drinking but basically a, a certain method or so. Like even if it's like for calling shots or basically like a certain tradition they have in that group. Oh yeah, like there's the there's this one world called Tavern or something like that, and there's like a music playlist, and you can click one of them, and it's Thunderstruck. So every time it says Thunder, one person has to drink, and then the next time it says Thunder, it's the next person. Whoever gets the solo, that poor fuck, he has to keep <laughs> chugging until the, the solo stops. Oh God. I've never gotten that, so thank God, I'm blessed. <laughs> you, you, you're lucky as hell. Especially for, yeah, right. especially for whoever that poor person is, because they're gonna they're not gonna have a bottle anymore by the time they get that done, or just feel really bad. Now nah, most drinking groups they have more than one bottle on hand prepared, <laughs> so Jesus, I'm sure they'll be fine. Jesus, I mean, I mean, hey, it is what it is on hand, especially with different traditions for what we got uh, going on. Mm -hmm. um, so something else too, which. It, it, this is something else too which is something that's basically everybody's everybody's got their own sense of humor no matter what it is or so like everybody's got like that light yeah. humor dark humor no matter what it is so the thing about it is with humor entirely is the fact that it brings people closer together it may not be the right thing in the sense of what somebody else hears but it's one of those things where basically everybody has something to joke about no matter what but it's only just for the sake of getting a laugh out of somebody so for you entire mm. for you entirely or so for you entirely or so people has la people have labeled you with like dark humor completely or just basically have that moment to oh, be yeah. able that moment where people just sigh about it and yeah <laughs> and the thing too I will ask is that like understand too like some of the darkest humors you you had on hand it's one of those things where you you had like the lightest forms of it but for the most part it's it's some of that basically it makes you think too. It makes you think. It gets a chuckle out of it here too, or so, because you know you got to find humor in almost anything here, even if it's yeah, like because humor is subjective. Yeah, it's so. objective. It's it's objective anywhere. But for you entirely, or so, and for anybody else that need to know, or so, where does most of your humor come from, or so, or basically originated from, for where you first started, and then basically as it kind of progressed and go further and further. Where I started with it. Uh. I mean, I've always been, like, somewhat of a funny guy, but as I got older, I just learned to make fun of, like, world topics more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And, like, as society today has, like, become more and more and more, like, sensitive about it, it's mm -hmm. like I have to watch which my audience is, which I shouldn't have to. Because comedy, there is no line. You yeah. either find it funny or you don't. You can, like, mm -hmm. block or mute me. That's fine. It's just... You know, comedy is how I express, like, everything. Like, mm. feelings or blah, blah, blah yada, yeah. random shit. I, I've always labeled that as, like, the Peter Parker effect, where basically you find, com you find comedy in almost anything, even if it's, like, the small quirks or basically one-liners or basically something you say, just because it's your way of being able to, you know, being, being able to, like, brighten a room up especially in the sense of like taking an attention off something that people are too focused on just to break away from it 
and sometimes that works yeah. and that works entirely because human. I mean mm -hmm. no go my bad no no you're good you're good but it's one of those things where humor itself it, it's perfect in the sense of basically you get your mind off a lot of things even if it seems even if it seems blunt or even if it seems dark on hand you're not thinking about whatever it is that's bothering you you're you're at least having something else to look at so that way you can at least get a laugh get a small laugh out of it or basically just you know just kind of like get a different reaction on it here and there so yeah like when i'm playing games with friends and sadly they're streaming <laughs> if something <laughs> happens in the game and i have the perfect one-liner but I know I can't say it because of Twitch TOS. I mm -hmm. type it in Discord chat in like the group that we're all in. <laughs> and I just tell them, hey, just look there. Cause like, I wish I could say it, but I can't. Man. No, I know. I got you. No, I got you. Like I said, it's it's an interesting subject on here because it's like this weird two face on, this weird 50 50 thing where basically, you know, no matter what it is or so, it falls under the line of humor. And like I said, everybody's gonna have a different humor, but sometimes humor itself would be question be questionable, especially for those who are not used to that kind of thing. Like the yeah. like the reason I'm used to some of your humor on here is because I grew up in middle school with that kind of humor around me, and I've always kept like the different kinds of humor in my own head of where certain things are here and there. So basically, I mean, we also grew up in Modern Warfare Two lobbies and Modern Warfare yeah. lobbies. And like those, the, those Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty lobbies, worst, where people today would not be able to survive with their mentality yeah. intact. Yeah, especially all oh, the good old days. <laughs> yeah, where you have somebody just basically yelling their mic hard enough, where basically you could just hear that crackle. Yeah, and you don't understand what they're saying, but you're having a laugh out of it because you have no idea what they're saying. Yeah, so. But, uh, uh, the good old days where you could betray someone in Griff Ball. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> wonder, wonderful days. Wonderful on days Halo. on Hay. Um, past that or so, I was also going to ask about, and like I said, I know you're not, I know, I know you're taking a break from drinking and everything. Trust me, I, I, I've stopped doing that too. You said I was taking a break. I said I just stopped drinking all the time. All the time. I got you. But I was gonna ask for yeah. I was gonna ask because I I was gonna ask on hand what would be your drink of mixture like if you ever had to make two mix two drinks together on hand, especially if you ever try to experiment. Or rum you... and vodka. Rum. <laughs> I'm not a typical mixer. All right, mm -hmm. I do not mix drinks. I hate it. Okay. Because it like takes away from the actual taste of what you bought. Like I. Like, I tried mixing, I bought Jack Daniels, couldn't drink it straight because it's disgusting. Tried mm. drinking it with Coca-Cola like everyone says to do. It was even worse. <laughs> Jesus. Worse on hand. I just do not like mixing. Like, the farthest I've gone with mixing that involved, like, a soda or something was uh, Sailor Jerry's rum mixed with Everclear... Mountain Dew Voltage. I don't know if I said that already. Mountain Dew Voltage, Everclear, Sailor Jerry's Rum, and Pinnacle Vodka, all in like one, like mug. I'm I'm actually kind of curious how potent was that the moment you took a sip of it. It had no it, it had no sting and it tasted like water. It canceled it each other out. It was a bad mix because you can't tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, that would happen too. It's like it I just only did that like three times. <laughs> yeah, I just stopped doing that because I just want to be able to remember most of my nights. You know. <laughs> no, I got you. I mean, you can easily win a bet against somebody where basically you said you could just say, you know, if I mix this all together and not feel, if not and then I feel drunk and all, you owe me something out of it. And literally, you could just basically get something out of that quick. It's kind of like it's kind of like with the whole. Yeah. It's kind of like with a, uh, okay. It's kind of like with like creating a sandwich with like all the spices you can ever put on it, like any sort of you know mustards or anything like that. All the spices will cancel mm -hmm. each other out. So when you take a bite yep. of it, or so, so we take a bite of it or so, people will think you're eating like the hottest sauce, the hottest uh, like sandwich in the world. But in actuality, basically you're seeing a normal sandwich. It's just basically all the yep. spices canceled out. And that's how you win $50. That's basically what that drink was. And everyone thought I was nuts. <laughs> it's like, you don't taste it at all. And that's how you win $50. It like, to, the fact that it was mixed with Mountain Dew Voltage, I think it would, looking back, it tasted like flat Mountain Dew Voltage. Like all the carbonation was out of it. That's what it tasted like. Mm -hmm. Because it was like the entire can with like a mixture 
a, a slight mixture of Everclear. Mm -hmm. Sailor Jerry's rum was a little bit more. And then it kept going up is what it was. Just It just kept stacking I mean, it little was a by big little. mug, though. Big mug, but yep. it had enough space in it for it to stack like, all of it. I do my portions. So I know what I'm doing. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you have your concoctions and everything. Concoctions on hand here and there. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's see here. I will ask to, and for different topics on hand, let's talk about the VR check current present right now. Compared to when you first started, to where we are now, what are some of the things you wish weren't changed through VR chat, or some of the things you're glad that had been changed through VR chat? Uh, you're saying repeat that again? Uh, basically, what you wish were changed is wish wasn't changed. Uh, what I'm saying is, like, when you first started VR chat, when you first began your first day, to compare to where we are now, current, present day. What are some of the things from there to there you wish were not changed or some things you are glad were changed from when you first started to where we are now? Um, the biggest pet peeve, and it's like not even like early VR chat, but the fucking new menu system where you click the menu and it has like the emoji and like all this other shit. And it's like, plus you used to be able to walk around mm -hmm and it would automatically reset it back to normal like this but no when you walk now it triggers emotes yeah. even when you don't want it to that's one thing i fucking despise mm -hmm. the one thing i did like was like the trust system where not because of what it is but being able to turn off specific stuff for mm -hmm. people yeah because like for me i turn off everyone's i turn off like everything for everyone except their avatars no textures no nothing except back when that one that, that was first implemented there were a lot of smart crashers I, I would say where they would put spheres everywhere around their character and then put a like say no no shader transparent where it makes it completely invisible that means people who have shaders turned on, or textures, whatever you want to call it, they wouldn't get crashed. But as soon as you turn them off, all those fears would appear and lag your PC and blue screen it, possibly, is what it would do. That was an old thing of it, and I hated that. I haven't, I have, actually, in my entirety, I've never actually encountered anybody with that. I think I'm, I think it might have just been, like, where I, I was. I haven't either, but I know people who have. <laughs> the, the worst thing I've ever got happen to me was basically, um... I think I was hanging out with Iron Souls at one point, and I went and went to go look at it. I went to start to look for my map, and somebody came up right behind me. Actually, someone came up right in front of me and decided to drop a portal right in front of me. And it wasn't it was it was in a world where you could not drop portals entirely. And oh yeah, I ran into those kinds of people's before the yeah. client where it just puts portals on people every time. Yeah, and I've seen some interesting things that happened in my first start in VR chat where basically. And it was mostly like people not crashing people for the sake of like maliciousness. It was in the sake of basically experimenting and seeing how this works and how this works just to mm -hmm. just to provide yeah. report to VR chat so they know what to avoid. But it was just something interesting on hand to see when that happened entirely. So, but uh, yeah, like as soon as they added the trusted settings to turn off custom animations, people were saved <laughs> from like the guns or the shit that would crash you immediately. And yeah. everyone in the room. That's why, like, when people didn't know about the trusted settings, like when it first started, you would see entire lobbies disappear, except a few, because they knew to turn off custom animations. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, there's a crasher in here. And then you can always target who it is. I mean, I mean, you're judging a book by its cover, the people with, like, the constant color changing shaders mm -hmm. and everything. I mean, I hate judging a book by its cover, but it's become so engrossed with that idea yeah. that this person's a crasher based on how they look it's become That's it's fucked <laughs> it's it's become a trope of itself when you moment yeah. you see it and i think the i think the other thing besides that or so is the fact that like i i don't have custom the only time i have custom animations on it's only for friends that i trust uh, only for same fr only for friends because at least with them they've got some interesting stuff they've got some interesting stuff they always want to share with everybody but i know for a fact most of their stuff is not going to crash anybody so which is, yeah. I which, wish, I, go, which which I'm glad, which I was gonna say, which I'm which I'm glad for all all together. But yeah, go ahead. 
what they need to add is like another uh option like for safety but you know how when you show and hide avatars mm -hmm. there should be a way to where when you show avatar you can select what you want to be shown on it because i don't want to show someone who i'm trying to talk to someone i don't see but i want to be able to like look at them yeah because like the way the robots work it's like they're not down here if i mean if they're a small avatar they're still gonna show up normally yeah, you're up there yeah it's a it's vr oh, right. it's, it's a vr chat glitch i i it happens it happens yeah, when you randomly that's the expect same, that's the same glitch that's going on along with the people sitting like or not sitting but standing in seats mm -hmm. all they have to do is sit in the same chair and get out yeah the one where people are seeing them in. Mm -hmm. I figured that out earlier, like before this interview started when I was hanging out with Phil and uh, Akage was having that issue. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. I, again, it's it's a, bu it's a bug that's happened on hand that I wish could be fixed, but it's one of those things where in order for them to fix it, they got to break something in order to fix it because that's become the tread of it with your yeah. chat. In order to get something, in order to get something fixed, you got to break something else. It's like, a weird full metal alchemist equivalent exchange kind of thing so but uh to kind of keep going on or so uh, let's talk about twitchcon on hand uh spe specific oh boy. 2019 <laughs> i mean I, I got a chance to meet you for the first time but i was going to say how was your experience at twitchcon entirely the sushi restaurant where i hate, i dislike sushi but they gave i bought chicken and it was like the most pathetic chicken pieces i've ever seen <laughs> it was so bad and it was expensive yeah but yeah. it was an interesting experience i guess yeah i it, didn't get my shit coming through the rolling no they brought it to me i kept telling okay. i kept telling you even if there was like something else that was like sushi wiser so i was gonna say if you look closely enough there's stuff in there that's actually that was not actually like sushi based or like there was actually a new york new york cheesecake that was actually going around that cafe or belt or like uh oh i tried to mention that to you but basically uh i think you were having a conversation with session who was in, the, who I was was in the other booth. across from you wasn't you or you were sitting we were was, in the same booth we were in we? The yeah we were in the same booth it was you me saya ren and the other booth was basically black mage bear uh scoot me scootin uh session and i think scoot showed up like after a bit. who's the one who showed up like that was after a bit? black black mage bear because scoot was the one who yeah, organized it mage. Yeah, Scoot was the one that organized it and brought Fun us up fact, there. Mm -hmm. That's the second time I've met him, Mage, because I went to hang out with him in Tennessee for a while. I got you. I didn't even know he was. For, I didn't even know yeah. he was. Uh, I didn't know he was like part of that area over there. So I actually thought he was like. Uh, he's nowhere. He's no longer in that state. He moved to like be with Scoots. So. I got you. But yeah, I, like, dude, the stories I have for Twitch comps. <laughs> Jesus. Interesting ones on hand. And I also know with the fact, too, that was actually the first time I met you. And it's one of those things, yeah. too, where when somebody tells you, when somebody tells you, you know, if you need to look out for somebody or so, basically be on the lookout for a certain trait they have. And the trait that someone told me, someone told me on hand is basically your orange, very bright mutton chops you had. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, I'm ginger. I have, <laughs> I'm pasty white. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm pretty easy to spot. Plus, I had my plague doctor's mask. Yeah, you too. had your plague doctor's mask. Nobody mentioned about the plague doc. Well, I do remember on Twitter you mentioned you were playing a plague doctor's mask with you. It's just that. Yeah. You, it's just that you had it with you at one time. You took it off, and I remember seeing you. I think we were at, actually by the board, actually. I think it might have been the first. The reason I took it off is because security said I wasn't allowed to wear it. I was gonna say, did they actually know, right? it? <laughs> did they not thoroughly check and see if there was anything in it just to be able to show it on hand? No, they told me that you can't wear anything that covers your face. It's like, how the fuck does cosplay work? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, okay, so like the thing they told me I could do is that I'm allowed to have it on if I'm taking pictures. Mm -hmm. So I started taking pictures with every single fucking person that I knew from VR chat at the board and shit. Yeah. And while I was taking a picture with someone with the mask on, I started seeing a security guard walking over. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I already know where this is going. And th my one friend was like, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, just watch. And I told her, yes, I know I'm not supposed to wear it, 
all the time. I'm only doing it for pictures like I was instructed I w or as I w was told I could do. It. And she's like, yeah, it's just some people over there were complaining about it. It's like, who I the thought... fuck snitched? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm, I'm actually Jesus. I'm actually kind of baffled. because it was like the most disappointing it. thing I had at BushCon. It was so dumb. It's like, why would you complain and ruin someone's fun? So dumb. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, besides TwitchCon or so, and like I said, you had some, uh, anything, I mentioned you, you've done a couple other things outside of, be, outside of TwitchCon entirely, or just kind of like, uh, because I know, I can't remember whose group you were in, because I feel you were in Don Italiano's group, right? Or? Yeah. You were, okay. And then I was, like, I was in their group the day before TwitchCon, I think. And then, and the next group I was at, well, I'll go story-wise, too. <clears throat> Don's group, I got so fucked up, I had three people walk me home. <laughs> and then, while I was walking home, you know, like, the, the metal holes that surround the trees? Yeah. I ended up stepping into that hole, falling, spraining the entire side of my arm, and now I have a scar on my shin. <laughs> Jesus. And then, <laughs> the next group I went to was uh, MZKD or KDB mm -hmm. and that was the day before I had to get on the plane to leave where I also got fucked up and I hate wearing socks on hardwood floors I should have known <laughs> like I turn a corner and I walk, walk towards something and I just fucking slip because I was walking too fast and then I also walked into a, a screen door because I had opened the door went outside sat on the patio and after like five minutes came back in but katie decided to leave the door open but close the screen door oh, i didn't know that <laughs> so i walked like head first into a fucking screen door at least it didn't break yeah that's good i, I was about to say it seemed like for the most time you just the souvenirs you only got out of they were just like cuts and cuts bruises and scars out of that on your on your tired yeah. of the trip there <laughs> jesus Jesus on hand. I mean, I wanted to hang out with Darth more, but as you know, he went to get a tattoo and never showed up again. Yeah, he yeah the he bastard. showed a picture. Show, yeah, he talked about it too. He showed a picture. I think he had a picture of it too that I remember seeing. Something from Demon Slayer, mm -hmm. I believe. So, but uh, this is this is where it kind of segues into like this next topic, which I I actually I don't even I'm not even sure on hand, but I'm kind of curious. Let's talk about anime. It, is there like certain kind of anime you watch on hand, or basically, uh, for ex for example, uh, what would be the first thing that pops in your mind when it came to anime or so that you, you watch? Or I mean, if it means favorites, Elf and Lied is my favorite. Elf and Lies. I've seen I've seen that before yeah. on hand. Because They're... I'm I'm into violent shit. Because I'm into horror movies and everything else. So. Mm -hmm. The last anime I watched, like, it was, like, a bunch of them. Like, they're all airing at the same time. But, like, I just finished binging Avatar, the first series. Now mm -hmm. I'm on Korra. But those... Are those really considered anime, though? Because they're American-made, aren't they? I am gonna. I'm gonna consider them, like... In a sense, I would consider them anime in the sense of, like, Western anime. Crunchyroll-wise? Crocher, maybe Cruncher wise in the sense of like Western anime. <laughs> yeah. I guess. If you. So. I was watching like Black Clover, God of High School, or whatever the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that one story with the tall, like, no one likes him guy and like short chick and he has like a crush on her and other shit? Because I like romance shit too. Um. There's also the Not My Girlfriend shit or whatever it's called. Like, I watch a lot of stuff every I, now and then. I got you. I got you. I, I was going to say, because I'll be honest to I'll be honest to you, is like, I never actually saw you as like the anime type when it came down to it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's one of those things, right, from first perspective when you look at her, so it's like, I don't think this man watches anime, and then you'd be proven wrong with the fact that basically he probably has more knowledge than you do on certain stuff. <laughs> so No, but like, I just treat them as shows. I don't really treat them as genres or, like, anime. Mm -hmm. I just treat them as shows because I grew up watching cartoons, and this is just cartoons from another country. It's like, 
it's the same thing except anime. I know it's a different style, but like yep. cartoons have a vast amount of styles and things that the mm-hmm. so I just include them in the same category. No, I got you. I got you. I feel like you grew up in the exact same era as me. Where you, you probably grew up in the exact same part where basically it's like, you know, you used to watch like Fox Kids where basically it's like Batman the Anime Series or like Superman as well as like yep. An- <laughs> Animania- Animaniacs uh, and all that. Courage the Cowardly Dog was my, one of my all-time favorites. You know why they canceled it? It was too scary for kids. That's the entire premise of the show. But I think that's what made me like horror movies growing up because... I loved that show. And like I, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, too. Mm-hmm. Cow and Chicken. Oh, Cow, nice. Cow and Chicken, Dexter's Laboratory. And then basically yeah. further down, further down, like you have the Adult Swim block where basically it's like Tichi Muyo, uh, Big O. Um, Inuyasha. Inuyasha. When it was playing. That's you, how I was introduced to anime. You Hakusho. show. Yep. All like that. Like Toonami before it got rebirthed in like. I don't, it came back like two years ago, I think. Yeah, it, about, about after a year. being gone for so long. About a year ago, so like it went back to its roots, but basically there was like this one revamp of it where basically it's like the rope. The it guy was, I'm, Tom was hideous. It was awful. <laughs> I hated the revamp one. He, he had like it the roundest face terrible. I've ever seen. Yeah, I liked like the shield advisor, the normal armor, not the fucking actual eyes, robot yeah. eyes, and like. Ugh. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> Entirely. So, in the question of anime, I have this one. Basically, what is the anime that hit you home? Like when you first watch it, what hit you like? Hit you home on hand? Like in a sense of like emotional feeling or something you could easily relate to? Uh. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I don't know. I would. I mean, the only, I don't think I've ever related to a show, but I think like episodes in a show, like had a, the ones that had a certain theme I could relate to. Like mm-hmm. in, uh, what the fuck is it called? Rise of the Shield Hero or whatever. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate that main bitch. The main, like, not protagonist, antagonist. Antagonist. Whatever her name is. Well, her name is bitch now. So that's yeah, fine. it is. It is but, now. <laughs> yeah, like I being like falsely accused of something, I hate that. So that like it didn't make me emotional, but it did make me well, I guess it did by making me pissed off. This is what yeah, it did. It made you relate to it. Like you understood on how it felt to be like that. Just the Oh just yeah, the, accused yeah. of something. Mm-hmm. No, I got you. I got you on hand. Which leads me to my last question on hand. And as you can see, I have this camera right here, and I'm going to give you the center floor to be able to look at it. And the thing is, uh, here, the thing is, I was going to basically ask you this, and the entirety of it is, what are your goals and dreams? And if, and if, you, and if you can, what would be the best advice you could ever share to anybody? Especially from your perspective to, anybody, to anyone else. So let me back up very quickly, and I'll give you the center floor for this. Oof. All right. Hmm. I think my goals and dreams, like one of my current goals is finishing uh, college classes for welding so I can get a better paying job to, it's like, finish college, get a better paying job, move out of my parents' house, and then like, I don't know. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> that's, that's all you get? <laughs> For, like, goals, but, like, dreams, I guess I would say... Like, I would like to do streaming instead of a normal job, but, like, I also get burnt out of streaming a lot, so... Like, I would go weeks off or whatever. But no, streaming is fun. I love the community I've made so far. And then advice, don't be afraid to speak your mind, even if you're going to get in trouble for it, especially in today's society where you have to be filtered 
because everyone's gonna hate you for what you say. I still do that shit, and I'm still hated by everyone. <laughs> so never let... Like, like, there's this one thing... Like, there's something that Stan Lee, what he once said, like, if you think you have a great idea, don't let some idiot talk you out of it. I really loved that quote. And I kept it with me, because my idea is be as funny as you can, even if it ruffles people's feathers, is what I got. That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I understand. And that's actually that's a really good quote from Stan Lee himself. Especially... especially Rest espe in peace. Yeah. He got Thanos snapped. Poor bastard. Anyway. <laughs> I, I thought he got to send it to Watcher. So... <laughs> But uh, but I will say for the most part entirely, uh, that will be episode 16 of Shoot the Breeze.